Good evening, church. Would you stand with me as we prepare to worship? I want to welcome you to our Good Friday communion service, the gathering tonight. And, and, and really at the center of our focus, the center of our attention as a community tonight is going to be gathering around the Lord's table. And I just wanted to give us a framework for what we're doing as we enter into reflecting upon not only the cross, but what it means to be united by the body and blood of Jesus. Matthew 26, Jesus institutes what's called the Lord's Supper, what would have happened last night on Thursday. Verse 26, he says, Now, now, now as they were eating, Jesus took the bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. The night before his crucifixion, G Jesus takes the traditional Passover meal, and he transforms it. He gives it a new meaning. No longer will it simply be a remembrance of deliverance from Egypt. This new meal is going to mark their deliverance from sin. And in a very real way, the cross only makes sense in light of what happens on Thursday night. Jesus takes the bread and he says, this is my body broken for you. He takes the cup and he says, this is the blood of the covenant poured out for what? For the forgiveness of sins. Jesus joins together communion and the cross in such a way that the two explain one another, that you cannot have one without the other. Jesus says, this is the meal of the covenant. This is the new agreement I'm making with humanity. No longer do you have to strive and get to me. I'm gonna give myself to you. What I do on the cross isn't just for you to look at and admire from a distance. It's something for you to participate in. 
And in fact, I'm gonna make it so easy for you to participate in what I'm doing that you're going to literally eat it and drink it. Tonight, as we reflect on the cross, we're gonna center, like I said, the service on the Lord's Supper because according to Jesus, um, he wants us to participate in what he's doing, not only by hearing his story, not only by worshiping, but by gathering together, uniting as one family around his table, eating his body broken, participating in the cup, his blood shed, at all times, but especially in times like this, Jesus gives us communion as a gift, as a gift. Something special takes place when all of us as individuals gather around one table. When all of us with our various backgrounds coming in tonight with, with various feelings and emotions come together in need of one bread partake of one cup. Jesus says, gather around and I'm gonna give myself to you. And not only that, I'm gonna unite you. So tonight as we hear the story of the cross, tonight as we sing worship, would you begin to prepare your hearts to gather at the table? Would you begin to reflect upon what it means not only for Jesus to have died, but for you to participate in what he's done on the cross. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we give you great honor tonight. We look upon your sacrifice, Lord. We look upon your sacrifice and we're in awe at what you've done for us. Lord, that your body was broken, your blood shed for the forgiveness of our sins. And Lord, even more so, we're in awe that you've called us to participate in this great sacrifice. Lord, that as we gather around as a church and unite at the table, that you say you'll meet with us and that we'll meet with you. Jesus, prepare us to partake prepare our hearts to be joined together and to meet with our living Savior. Amen. Let's worship. Oh, if you bear his name, sing the 
song forever We'll sing the song forever and name it Sing your name is the highest Cause your name is the highest Your name is the greatest It stands above them all All thrones, all thrones and dominions All powers and positions Oh, it stands above them all And the angels cry Holy, all creation cries Holy, you are lifted high Holy, holy forever Hear your people sing Holy, to the King of Kings Sing your name is the highest Cause your name is the All thrones All powers and positions Your name stands above Your name is the greatest Your name stands above them all All thrones and dominion All powers and positions Your name stands above them all And the angels cry Holy, all creation cries. Holy, you are lifted high. Holy, holy forever. Hear your people sing. 
holy to the King of Kings. Holy, you will always be. John chapter 19, verses 1 through 16. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him, and the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I'm bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! And Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. And the Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he's made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. And from then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you're not Caesar's friend. Everyone who, makes himself a, everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to be crucified. It was for our sin that Christ went to the cross. They flogged him and then placed on his head a crown of thorns that pierced his flesh and laid on him a scornful scornful purple robe that brushed up against his open wounds. Oh, the irony. These mocking royal trappings adorned the one true king. Pilate had worn a path from Jesus to the angry crowd back and forth, back and forth, trying to make sense of it all, trying to get out of it, tormented by his wife's dream of Jesus' innocence and convinced that beating Jesus would elicit compassion from the bloodthirsty mob. He was confronted with the fact that even his own perceived authority was handed to him by God to carry out sentence on the Son of God. They shouted, Hail, King of the Jews, as a joke, because the only way to lawfully put this innocent man to death was to accuse him of treason, a man who claimed to be a king in opposition to Caesar. And had the Sanhedrin still had the right to execute Jesus, if the Romans weren't in charge, he would have been stoned. But instead, and to fulfill prophecy, he was headed to the cross. The previous night, as he broke bread and took the cup, he had been preparing himself and his followers for the way of suffering that we share with him, in him. For when we share in his sufferings, we also share in his glory. On this Friday, the day of preparation for the Passover, at this hour when the Passover lambs would begin to be sacrificed in Jerusalem, it was the perfect Lamb of God, Jesus, who was being prepared for sacrifice. We'll continue to read through John chapter 19, but I want you to take advantage of the stations that we have out in the hallway. We have our gathering book, our journal, that we've had for years now. You can add a prayer, a praise, a poem, a verse. We also have a station out here called Confession, because His mercies are new every morning. Amen. 
And then there's a prayer station out on this side of the lobby, and there's going to be a pastor there that will pray for you, um, anoint you with oil, um, meet you where you need. So we invite you to take part in those stations tonight. The doors will remain open. We just ask that you keep it quiet while you're out there. But we're going to continue to worship right now.
Sing it again now, my dad. Oh, now my dad is paid. That my Jesus spilled. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me. Whom the sun sets free, always oh, free. Yeah. 
more time. Oh, that rugged cross Where your love poured out over me Now my soul cries out Alleluia Praise and honor unto John 19, verse 17 says, So they took Jesus, and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the Place of the Skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, with two others, one on either side and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, let us not tear them and for my clothing, they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things, but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. From that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. And as I'm reading this this week and even today going through the, the story of the crucifixion, I'm confronted by, by the shame present at the crucifixion. But I'm reminded of the fact that it wasn't the nails in his hands and feet or the soldiers present or the crowd around him that kept Jesus on the cross. It was his love for us. It was his obedience to the Father's will that kept him on that cross. And it's always so uh, mind-blowing to me, the parts of the scripture where it points out that the soldiers there were openly mocking him and casting lots for his garments. And in Luke's depiction of this moment, he, he shares that as they're casting lots for his garments, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And I'm reminded in that fact, I, I think as a believer now, I feel like anger towards these soldiers. How, the, how could they do that to my Savior? How could they do that to Jesus? But, but I remember that, that I am them. We are these soldiers that put Jesus on the cross. It's our sin. It's our shame that he bore. And I'm comforted by the fact that even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins, he made us alive together with Christ. It's for by grace we've been saved. Through faith. It's not our works. It's a gift of God. And I think remembering this fact as a youth pastor, I used to say week after week to my students, a, a room full of people who had no business being in the room together, just like tonight, we come from all different backgrounds. We bring all different types of baggage to the room tonight. And I would say to the students, and I'll say to you tonight, I don't have to know what your problem is to know where your solution is found. There is unity at the foot of the cross, that despite all of what we bring into this place, the sins that we have committed, that we have all fallen short of the glory of God, we find ourselves united in the need for a savior. We all sit around the table together, partaking of the body and the blood. And we get to participate in the power that is found in that. So we're going to continue in this time and right now as we go into our next song i want to give you a little instruction but before i do right after this song our, our pastor is going to lead us in communion together as a community as a family we were all going to take the bread and the cup the body and the blood together but before i send you out and give you instruction on on how to get communion scripture is clear that communion is for the body Communion is for believers, but here is the good news tonight. For by grace we have been saved through faith. Not a result of works, it's a gift of God. 
And I believe that tonight might be the night of salvation for you. So in the, the time that I'm about to set up, I want to encourage all of us to not only just go and get the elements and bring them back to our seats, but take time to reflect, to accept this gift of salvation that has been freely given, that we don't have to strive and do things by our own might, but we can rest in what God has already done, the finished work of the cross, that we are all in need of a savior here in this place. And so as you do, take some time to reflect. But I, I want you to know right now, the team's going to create a space and we're going to go into another song. And as we do, on, on either side of the door, if you're on this side, you can make your way out of the room that way. If you're on this side, you can make your way out of the room that way. We want to encourage you to go and grab the cup and the bread, but don't take it. Because we want to do this as a family. We want our pastor to lead us in communion together. So God, we thank you for all that you're doing in this place. We ask that you would meet us in this moment, that as we reflect, that, that we would remember that you are faithful, that your blood covers every single one of our sins. God, we repent. Forgive us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys can take some time to get the elements right now. Some imagine 
judging you How distant I removed But you chase us down in merciful pursuit To the sin of you were grace The broken you embraced In the end the proof is in your And the proof is in your wounds Oh, blood and tears How can it be? There's a God who weeps There's a God who bleeds Oh, praise the one Who would reach for me Oh, hallelujah to the son of suffering Hallelujah Hallelujah Your cross, my freedom Your stripes, my healing To God in heaven, your blood still speaking, your love is still reaching all praise, King Jesus. Glory to God. Sing your cross, your cross is my free. Your blood is still sweet. Your love is still glory to God forever. Glory to God forever. Glory to God. later knowing that everything had now been finished and so that scripture would be fulfilled Jesus said I'm thirsty a jar of wine vinegar was there so they soaked a sponge in it and put the sponge on the stalk of the hyssop plant 
and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now it was the day of preparation and the next day was to be a special Sabbath because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who who had been crucified with Jesus and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man, who saw it has, the man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies so that you also may believe. These things happen so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken, and as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. We're going to take communion tonight. But before we do, I, I, I do want to do this. Communion is one of these things that the Lord has uh, left for us to do. Same as baptism is something we are to do as believers when we gather together. And so that's why we do this, to remember the cross. And I, I love communion when you really think about the history and the tradition of the church and, and what took place. This ties us to the beginning. This ties us in 2024 to the Last Supper. This ties us to it. Just like the disciples, we've been invited to the table. And I want to take a moment tonight and just do this. If you're here tonight, I want to invite you to the table. If you don't know Jesus, if you don't follow Jesus, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, that can change tonight. Maybe you've seen the table, maybe you've even approached the table, but you've never sat down at the table. There's some that that church can easily just become something that you do, a tradition, but what I'm talking about is relationship having a relationship with Jesus, being a follower of Jesus. And if you're here tonight, before we take communion, I want to give you that opportunity. So if you're here tonight, and you know, I I want to follow Jesus, I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer with me. And maybe you've prayed it before, but you really didn't do it. You really didn't turn away from sin and follow Jesus. But maybe tonight is that night for you to really become a follower of Jesus. I love that verse 35 when it says, the man who saw it has given testimony and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth and he testifies so that you also may believe. I wanna invite you to believe in Jesus. Be a follower of Jesus tonight. I'm going to pray, and I'm just going to ask if you're here tonight, just if you would want to pray this prayer, uh, repeat it after me. And I'm going to invite anyone that's here tonight to to pray this prayer with us. If you are a believer, will you pray this prayer with me to support those that are praying it for themselves tonight? And again, I want you to know this. There's no magic words in these prayers because it's not a words thing. That's just you kind of stepping forward and and doing something uncomfortable and, 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 and making that that, that proclamation, I'm going to be a follower of Jesus. But what really takes place is inside of you, in your heart, your mind, making him the Lord of your life, turning from sin, repenting, and turning and following Jesus. So if you want to pray that prayer with me tonight, I'm going to invite you to. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Jesus, I want to follow you. Please forgive me of my sins. I pray that I would turn to you. Be the Lord of my life. Surround me with others that will help me follow you. Grab hold of my head, my heart, my mind, 
and my soul. I love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, or maybe you prayed that prayer and you really know, like, tonight is it. This is it. Like, this is that line in the sand moment. I want to follow Jesus. Can I invite you, if you didn't already, go grab communion because you're at the table. And so I don't want anyone to miss out on this. And so we're going to take communion right now. And, and again, we do this to remember Jesus died on the cross. We do this because he commanded us to do this, to remember him. On the night the Lord Jesus would be traded, he took the bread and he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this whenever you take it in remembrance of me. Let's take it. In the same way, he took the cup, saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus, we need you. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on a cross, for paying the price for our sins, Lord, that we now have life through you, Jesus. So I pray for all of us tonight, Lord, whether there is uh, followers of you that have been following you for, for decades, Lord, or if there is followers of you that have just, just joined the family, Lord, I pray that you would just grab hold of our hearts, Jesus, that you would transform us, Lord, that you would just uh, make us new in you, Jesus. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen.
He silenced the boast of sin. Sing it again. Death could not hold. Oh, death could not hold you. The veil torn before you. He silenced the boast of sin. The heavens, the heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. Oh, you have no rival. You have no equal. Now and forever. Come on, sing it again. Death cannot hold you. Death could not hold you The veil tore before you You silence the bones Of sin and grave The heavens are roaring The praise For you are raised To life again You have Oh you have no sing it again your blood is still speaking your love still reaching all praise King Jesus sing your cross your cross my freedom your stripes my healing all praise King Jesus your blood Still speaking, your love still reaching our praise. Come on, see it again. Your cross, your cross is my freedom, your strife. Our praise. Glory to God in heaven. Your blood is still speaking. Your love is 
to God forever. Glory to God. Glory to God forever. Glory to God. Sing blood and tears. Blood and tears How can it be There's a God who weeps There's a God who bleeds Oh, praise the one Who would reach for me Oh, hallelujah Hallelujah to this. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, sing it one more time. Oh, hallelujah. God, we praise you. This, this next song is going to be a new song for most of you. but it just simply says, thank you for the cross. It says, thank you for breaking your body and spilling the wine of your blood. Because without it, we're nothing. So God, we come before you tonight. We say thank you.
will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you lord and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing Great. Come on, sing it. All the earth. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. together all hail King Jesus all hail King Jesus. all hail the Lord of heaven and earth all hail King Jesus sing it 
together. voice can we keep singing that chorus again says, after these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took the body. Nicodemus, also who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths and 
with, with the spices as the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. And when I, when I read this, the, the, the story of the crucifixion, the story of his burial, um, as Niall said at the start of this, that it's a good Friday because of Sunday, because of what, t- what took place three days later. We know this. And the symbol of the cross that Jesus was crucified, that symbol before Jesus, that was a symbol of fear. It was a symbol of death, of pain. But to us today, come on, church, there's hope that the, the presence of trials is no match for the future glory that is to be revealed that the symbol of the cross was forever changed because of what took place three days later. I want to say this, that everybody has a seat at his table. The the theme of tonight is the gathering at the Lord's table, that every single person who call on the name of Jesus, there's a seat for you. And that all sin is equal at the foot of the cross. Come on, church, that's good news tonight. I appreciate you. Come on. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 says, you were paid at a high price. I wonder if you know that tonight, that you were paid at a high price and that all sin, all mistakes equal at the foot of the cross, that there is no sin too great, no prodigal too far, that you cannot be saved, that the grace is enough, the blood is enough. Amen, church. Can we rejoice in that tonight, that the blood is enough, that his grace is enough? Come on, every hand lifted to heaven. Can we end tonight in praise and thanksgiving for he is worthy in Jesus' name. Come on. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation I turned to heaven. And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ Come on, let's sing it together. Who could imagine?
Come on, let's sing that again. Then came the morning. Your baby body began to breathe And out of the silence The roaring lion Declared the great has no claim on me Oh Jesus, yours, it's the victory in Jesus and I think all of us just need to remember that be reminded of that our hope is in Jesus do you believe me tonight our hope is in Jesus thank you so much for for being a part of tonight and being here this is our longest service of the year um, that we do but it's it's worth it just to be here and, and to uh, remember the cross and what took place but we're coming back together again on Sunday and we want to invite you to be a part of, of Sunday Easter Sunday service we have two services one at 9 and one at 11 um, the rain is coming but I encourage you still come to church um, if you can park off site park off site get a good umbrella um, but we will have parking uh, here and people helping you park on Sunday so just be careful as you pull into the parking lot I also want to encourage you um, we are, uh, are going to be talking about Jesus on Sunday, obviously, and uh, if you know someone who needs Jesus, can I invite you to invite them? Um, if you are on our social media, we've been putting out posts. There's a, a really simple way. You can just uh, put that post out that we've put up, tag some people in it, invite them to come to church with you, um, but we'd love to, to have them here. So. We love you guys. Please drive safe home tonight. God bless you. Thanks for coming out and being a part of tonight.